Hello and welcome. In this video, I will explain economic analysis using discrete time dynamical systems. Economic analysis is the study of economic models and the underlying variables. We can divide economic analysis into static and dynamic analysis. Static analysis is also known as equilibrium analysis. For example, <clears throat> consider the demand and supply model where we have to find the equilibrium values of price and quantity. So when we impose the equilibrium condition that quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied, which is some level Q star, we find that Q star is alpha delta minus beta gamma over beta plus delta. And the equilibrium price becomes alpha plus gamma over beta plus delta. Now, this comes under static analysis. Likewise, we learned about the national income determination model where we find the equilibrium values of consumption, income, and taxes, etc. Now, suppose that we want to uh, see the impact of changes in the model parameters like alpha, beta, gamma, and delta in this case. For instance, what if income of the individual increases? How would it impact the demand? In this case, the parameter alpha would change. So we can find out these changes uh, in the parameters and their impact on the equilibrium values of the underlying variables by using the tools of derivatives. And that would come under comparative static analysis. Likewise, we can also see the impact of COVID-19 shock. In this case, both the demand and supply will be affected. Uh, the demand will decrease, so the impact would be on parameter alpha. The value of alpha will decrease. On the other hand, it will also impact supply side of the product. Therefore, gamma would have a larger value, and because there is a negative sign, which means that there is a negative effect on the quantity supplied. And in this way, when we analyze changes in the model parameters on the equilibrium values, that will fall under comparative static analysis. Dynamic analysis, on the other hand, considers economic variables and their trajectories over time. So we will be analyzing different economic models where the variables will evolve or change over time. The time may be discrete or continuous, and we can divide dynamic analysis into simple and complex economic dynamics. In case of simple dynamic analysis, we would be using the tools of uh, difference and differential equations uh, to model variables with respect to discrete time and continuous time respectively. That is, we will be using difference equations for discrete time models and differential equations for continuous time models. Complex dynamics, on the other hand, is uh, a way of uh, incorporating nonlinearities into our models and then seeing the impact of those nonlinearities. And the beauty of complex dynamics is that the model is uh, without any random shocks. However, because of the nonlinearities and the certain values of the parameters, the model will generate a time path or trajectory that would look like a trajectory of a random variable. So you can uh, think of a logistic function, for example, yt plus one equals to alpha yt times one minus yt. Now, this is a very simple uh, dynamic model, but uh, it is nonlinear and if we allow for different values of parameter alpha which ranges between 0 to 4 so we will see that this uh, this function the logistic map will uh, will generate a trajectory which may have uh, a cycle of period 2 or uh, which means that we have two equilibrium values and the system rotates between those two values or it can be uh, four equilibrium values where uh, it moves to one equilibrium value then it goes to the next value so we call these limit cycles so there may be limit cycles in this case and uh, complexity arises when the model variable takes value which is say 3.5 or close to 4 and that that would be the situation what we call in dynamic literature uh, chaotic dynamics. 
Now, for the sake of uh, this subject, we will only consider simple dynamics where we will focus only on the first order linear and nonlinear difference equations. Okay, so let us start discrete time dynamical systems. So first some notations. Remember that time is discrete in this case. That means t is 0, 1, 2, and so on. We have variable y at time t denoted by y subscript t. Also, it depends, it's possible that y t depends on its past lags, which means we can have one lag denoted by y t minus 1. After two periods, the lag value would be y t minus 2. Likewise, for three periods, lag is y t minus 3. And for the nth period, the lag value would be y t minus n. Now, we can uh, consider an example where we take uh, four time periods, uh, in fact, five time periods starting from 0 to 5, and variable takes values 8 to 9, uh, 3, and 10 respectively in, in uh, those five periods. Now, we want to generate a lag of variable yt. The first lag would simply be the there is no information in period minus 1 Hence, we cannot get a lag against time period 0. But then, in period 1, the lag value of y becomes the value in period 0. And therefore, we have 8 there. So, you trim one value from the bottom and then slide down the, the whole vector so that you can get one period lag of yt. If you are interested in uh, yt minus 2 or uh, lag values of yt in two periods, then again, we will trim one value from the bottom of yt minus one and uh, slide it by another cell and so on. So in this way, we can generate the lag values of the variable. Okay, now we consider the first order linear difference equation where yt plus one is equal to function of its lag yt plus some function gt. For example, f of yt can be uh, byt, and gt function can take uh, different forms. It can be a polynomial function of time. If gt is constant, uh, that means equals to a, we would have the difference equation called um, autonomous difference equation. However, if it is a function of time, for example, a linear function, in that case, we will call it a non-autonomous equation. Furthermore, uh, we can uh, write our autonomous case uh, as yt plus 1 equals to a plus b y t. Uh, this a can again be 0 or non-zero. If it is 0, in that case, the difference equation would be called a homogeneous difference equation. And if it is not equal to zero, then we would be ha having a non-homogeneous difference equation. To represent our second order difference equation, we can write it as yt plus two, which has two periods uh, lead, plus two indicates a lead for two periods, a plus b y t plus one plus c times y t. And if you uh, iterate this equation for two periods, you can alternatively present this equation as yt equals to a plus b y t minus 1, which is the first lag of the variable, plus c times y t minus 2, which represents the second lag of the variable. And moving in this way, you can add further lags and that will increase the order of the difference equation. Thus, an nth order difference equation would have n lags of the same variable. Let us first solve the first order difference equation, which is autonomous and uh, non-homogeneous. So a is not equal to zero. And we also assume that b is not equal to zero. This is required because uh, b non-zero value of b brings the dynamics into the system. We also need to think about the initial value, the starting value of the system when the time was zero. For example, uh, you put your $100 in bank today for 10 years. So today, 
the value you put in your account, $100, is the initial value of your investment. So let us uh, consider the time period where we have uh, time moving from 0 up to t, and the variable takes different values. At time 0 value is y0, at time 1 value is y1, and so on. Now, we can uh, substitute different values into our equation. For example, y1 would be a plus b y0, and y2 would be a plus b y1. But we already know that y1 is a plus b y0. Therefore, we put that value into our uh, variable y2, or value of y at period 2. And after multiplication, we find it becomes a plus ab plus b squared times y0. Likewise, for y3, we will observe that the variable takes values as a plus ab plus ab squared plus bq times y0, which you can further simplify by taking a as common and get a times 1 plus b plus b squared plus b cubed times y0. This is our y3. Now we want to uh, deduce the value of uh, y3, that uh, what could be y, yt from uh, this uh, expression y3. If you look at the term inside the brackets and uh, this term here, so you see that time period is 3 and the value of b is 1 less the time period. So it is 3 minus 1 or 2. And we have three terms there. And b has power 3, which represents the third period here as well. So on the basis of this, we can write down our yt uh, as a times 1 plus b plus b squared. And this will go up to b t minus 1. So you can compare when t was 3, b had power uh, 3 less 1. Now time is t, therefore we have power of b uh, t minus 1 and up to t minus 1 including the first term 1 it includes three terms and b would have power t on it times y naught now uh, the term in the brackets 1 plus b square plus uh, so on up to b power t minus 1 this is basically a geometric progression and we can find the sum of this geometric series as 1 minus b t upon 1 minus b. Maybe in high school you have learned that. And we are imposing that b is not equal to 1, otherwise uh, this sum would be infinity. and uh, Or it may take indeterminate form. Now we have to uh, substitute this value into the function and that makes it as a times 1 minus b power t divided by 1 minus b plus b power t times y naught. Remember that this is the iterative method or the recursive method of solving the difference equation up to time period t. We can apply limit on t that t goes to infinity and can solve that. And you will find that uh, when we have limit t goes to infinity uh, b power t, this would be going to 0 if we have absolute b less than 1 and would be infinity if absolute b is greater than 1. Therefore, the, the value of b matters. It, it tells us whether the time path will converge or diverge. And think about b taking value minus 1. So it means that for odd periods, the negative sign will be there. For even periods, the negative sign changes to positive, And the value will fluctuate between a positive and negative value. And that means that we, we, we have a uniform uh, trajectory where it is oscillating between positive and negative values. Right? Uniform oscillatory time path. We will discuss this uh, in a while. Now, we want to uh, solve this uh, difference equation using analytical method. So let's learn the analytical method of solving the difference equation.